Ai jingle nonna, jingle nonna, io che casa. Jingle nonna, jingle nonna, io che casa. O cas non ti importa nonna, cai lo go passa. O cas non ti importa nonna, cai lo go passa. A ting can tun ting can tun ting fala nun ting. Amor mia ramu, ramu mia coresa. Oh, jingle nonna, jingle nonna, io che casa. Jingle nonna, jingle nonna, io che casa. Oh, cas non ti importa nonna, cai lo go. They are one of the smallest minorities in Malaysia, and yet somehow their identity is perhaps the most ambiguous. This is a story of a mixed race community of European ancestry whose forefathers arrived and settled in Southeast Asia in the late 1400. I'm Southeast Asian with European ancestry. That is what a Sarani is. Sarani is, you can't say, an identity label of a community that began in this part of the world from the arrival of the Portuguese who had mixed race children um, with the local and indigenous women. Um, and because of the uh, fact that the children um, were Christians, they followed the religion of their father, Catholics mainly, um, they were referred to as Nasrani. And Nasrani is a term that was, and still is used in like even Indonesia, for Christians of any ethnicity. Um, and Nasrani was, was the term for, for Christians. But as the uh, community grew among themselves, um, Nasrani became, was truncated to become Sarani. And from, from what is known as an exonym, which is an identity label given by other people, it became an endonym, which is an identity label that is adopted by the people themselves. So that is the origin of Sarani. However, the Sarani also has another name. The identity label of Eurasian was created by the British administration when they arrived in this region in the 1700s and maybe even before that in India, when they were in India, maybe in the 16th, 1700s. Um, and Eurasian was what was the exonym for the community that actually sprung from the mixed race children of the British and the local women um, from India and then all the way down to even Singapore. Um, but because the Sarani people were here before the British, the Sarani community existed before the British. And so what happened along the lines was that a lot, as history kind of like rolled along, right, there was a lot of intermarrying between the, uh, the Sarani community and the new or recent Eurasian community. And also because I guess um, English began to uh, become the, uh, the uh, lingua franca of the day um, in terms of administration, right? Uh, people began to assume that Sarani was the translation of Eurasian. But actually, Sarani existed before Eurasian was coined. So my Sarani mission is to remind people that we actually had a name um, which is more authentic to us. So from my point of view, Sarani is like, Sarani to Eurasian is like Hakka is to Chinese. Sarani locates us and gives us a history, right? And Eurasian is basically a generic term, like Chinese. We spoke Malay before the British came because our foremothers perhaps were Malay or any of the other various indigenous and, and uh, indigenous and vernacular communities that existed in this part of the world. So like my heritage comprises not just the European side but also a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, Asian side. You know, like both my grandmothers have Chinese blood. You know, one is Thai Chinese adopted by a Sarani family. So culturally, she is actually Sarani, but she's genetically Chinese Thai. When it comes to Sarani, the Portuguese are the most dominant offshoot in the country. They are also known as the Kristang people. 
the Portuguese descendants are the dominant Eurasians. So kita kekalkan kita punya kebudayaan, kita punya perayaan, kita punya pesta macam San Pedro. Tiap-tiap tahun ramai nak datang ke Melaka. Tak bukan orang keturunan Serani saja, tapi lain-lain orang Cina, orang India, kawan-kawan semua 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 datang Melaka. Kan tu boh turu ke Grand Kristang you know da go to anda kau ziki ake pralo tenglap au kam kau zu bo tu kristang ga bo sabe leba ke prao ga au ke bo anda neto kan tu ziki yo para isi pralo mbori tago eso te bai manu sabe bai keturunan portugis memang ada dia punya bahasa kriol melaka sendiri we have our own kriol language that is unique to melaka kita ada kita kita punya macam tarian persembahan kebudayaan yang unik di Melaka. We have our own cultural heritage. We have our own unique festivals like San Pedro, Intrudu, San Juan, Asunta. And lagi satu, we belong to a common language and that is uh, we we are all uh, basically Catholics. So that three uh, I would say criteria is uh, unique to us and it gives us an identity as a special uh, as an identity as a race in Melaka. A Sarani's ancestry can be easily identified by their surnames. Di Costa, Santa Maria, Dias, uh, Tisera. Uh, itu yang very clearly can tell you that it is keturunan Portugis because it's also also something that you find in history books. For Dutch, dia punya suara macam Van Hoosen, Westerhout. Uh, itu Lembrugen. Itu semua mungkin dia punya suara I can tell you that it's Dutch. Okay, kalau English mungkin Yang, uh, Denke, sekali also maybe it's also English. So, we have a generation of uh, three major European uh, surnames in Melaka. Tapi, all have been assimilated into the mainstream. Yang ada dekat uh, kebudayaan or sejarah uh, Belanda is they left left tangible heritage, bangunan. Tapi memang their own Creole language, dia punya kebudayaan so not many you can find in like in fact hardly. So even the English they only left tangible uh, buildings like the like a Uh, clubhouse and a few other buildings. Tapi the Portuguese left not only tangible uh, sejarah sebagai tangible heritage, also intangible. In fact, the Portuguese Serrani even have their own settlement in Ujong Pasir, Melaka. It was built in 1933 and officially gazetted in 1988. Nasib baik kita ada kampung sendiri, itu ialah kampung Portugis. Tapi kampung Portugis is only dekat 80 tahun, so it's only established in 1930s. But sebelum tu kampung sejarah Portugis, keturunan Portugis ialah di Kubu, di Bunga Raya, di Bandar Hile dan Tangkera. Unlike their English and Dutch brethren, the Portuguese Serrani are mostly fisher folk. And they are known for their chinchalo, a famous condiment. Okay, chinchalo ialah satu macam fermented uh, krill. Ini krill kita panggil grago lah. Uh, grago ialah ini udang kecil lah yang kita buat chinchalo, buat belacan, masyur di Melaka lah. Tangkai itu udang, kita cuci. Lepas itu kita uh, taruh dia punya ramuan uh, nasi, nasi sudah masak. Ada dia punya, dia punya orang cakap dia punya resepi lah. Garam, lepas itu kita taruh dalam botol. Kita bagi dia duduk 2-3 hari. Lepas itu, okey lah, dia ada masak. Tapi boleh makan lah. Fermented shrimp lah, kira. Uh. Okey lah, sekarang Uh, mau kira dia punya tangkapan gerago sudah 
banyak berkurang. Dulu bila pantai sebelum tambak uh, tambak laut, bila kita melihat pantai macam uh, natural seafront, ini gerago tiap-tiap tahun dia sampai. Abi kita tangkap uh, pagi sampai petang. Kita serenda, gerago tak serenda. You boleh tangkap sampai berapa banyak you tangkap. Dia tak habis-habis. Tapi sekarang uh, kurang. Kenapa dia dah tambah laut yang itu tempat yang gerago natural habitat dekat pantai sudah hilang. So kalau itu gerago dah sampai pun dia tak sampai dekat darat. Dia ikut arus, dia pun uh, pergi lain tempat lah. However, the reclamations happening in the Straits of Malacca are threatening the Gragu Krill's population. Uh, sekarang dia dah tambah bukan tempat sudah so jadi lagi dalam, abi sudah terlalu berlum, uh, tak lumpur dia pasir. Pasal dia Gragu dia nak air keruh sikit. Kalau dia berlumpur, dia memang air keruh dia sesuai untuk Gragu. Uh, kalau sekarang dia sudah jadi lagi dalam, lagi lagi pun pasir dia punya air tak keruh itu itu uh, gerabu dia, dia tak singgah dia jalan dengan arus ya. kalau dia ada tempat macam natural ada tempat yang lindung uh, dia mungkin lagi lagi keruh lagi banyak dekat pantai Kelimbang kita ada sikit tapi dekat Lembongan dekat Tengkira dekat ni kita punya kampung Banu Hilir kampung Putegis memang tak lagi saya saya ingat saya beli gerago dari nelayan yang akhir sekali bulan uh, tahun saya ingat uh, 12 tahun dulu. So ni 2021 the last I bought was maybe in 2000 4 yang last saya beli. Sekarang langsung tak ada. Lepas itu ini ini udang pun kita kena bawa dari mungkin sikit kita import dari uh, Kukup dari Johor, dari Penggeran, pasal tempat dia, pantai ada lagi sikit. Tapi kita dekat Melaka memang kita harap sikit dekat pantai Kelebang saja. Tapi itu pun banyak kurang. Mahal, hal pun sekarang sudah banyak mahal. Kadang-kadang kita ada duit pun tak boleh beli. Barang sudah banyak kurang. Like any culture, the Surani have their own cuisine. One which combines the gourmet elements of the Malays, Chinese, and Indians. This is Melba Nunes, a renowned Malaysian chef who specializes in Kristan cuisine. The rasa would be a lot of our our uh, food, our cuisine is spicy uh, because we've got sambal. Sambal's because of the influence of the Malays. The spices because of the influence of the Indians. And then beranakkan lemak-lemak lah, you know they like to eat uh, santan and then uh, what do you call it a uh, uh, lot of like ulam and all that, you know like sour and all. So that that is uh, how it would you be able to see the taste lah. Vinegar is a crucial ingredient in the Serrani Portuguese cooking. For the Portuguese uh, Christian food, we use a lot of vinegar. Vinegar in our in our food, and also um, how do you say the the rempah lah, the, the normal sambal rempah with all the galanggal and lemongrass and all that. Yeah. One of the more famous Kristang dishes has a rather controversial name. It is called the Devil Curry. Today, I think it's so distinct that you know everybody associates the Devil Curry with a Eurasian. So how did it come about? I really, from what I hear, is those days it was like the leftovers from Christmas. Just to say here that uh, we Eurasians eat a lot of pork, huh? just to mention that. But because we can substitute it with chicken, we do it with chicken as well. The devil curry recipe she inherited from her mother uses galangal, lemongrass, candle nut, lots of shallots, dried chilies, nutmeg, black pepper seeds, and cloves. But the most important ingredient for a devil curry is mustard seed. So once the, the ingredients are grounded, uh, you have to prepare your meat, of course, if it's pork or chicken or, or 
uh, ham or whatever you're using, you can prepare that. And then in oil, you got to tumis lah. You got to fry your rempa until you know until it uh, rempa pecah minyak lah cooks lah. Then you add in your meat. Once you add in your meat, you balik balik the thing nicely, cook it nicely, and then add water. So cook it again until it's almost drying up. Then last of all, vinegar goes in, sugar and salt. The most important ingredient in a devil curry would be the vinegar. Because vinegar will give it the, the, that sour taste, you know. And what is nice is that when you keep devil overnight, ah yeah, lagi best lah. And because of the spiciness in it, you know, we don't call it devil, we say devil. Because we associate the devil with heat, hot heat. You know, so um, that is how it came about. Lah. But we, the Christian people, still call it Debal curry. But the, to any other person or people, they would, it would be Debal curry. Every family would have their own recipe. There may be 10 Debal curries. Uh, each one, if you try, will be different. Despite the dish's Portuguese ancestry, there is no devil curry in Portugal. You can't find our cuisine in Portugal. I've been there and I've been to look around for, for similarities in the dishes, huh? but unfortunately, no, because they are orang putih, they are matzales, they are Portuguese people who do not cook spices like we do, like the Malays, like we do. They don't. So whatever is there is very European, you know? So you get like stews, you get grilled fish, everything is super, but definitely not spicy and not, <laughs> not at all like ours here. With only about 2,500 of them left in Malacca, the older generation of Sarani Portuguese are left concerned about the survival of their culture and language. Okay, memang kita ada macam satu issue, not only issue, uh, I would say the in future kita ada, akan ada satu identity crisis. Kenapa saya saya uh, cakap macam ni? Pas, pasal orang muda kita, our young generation is not taking uh, dia punya cultural heritage, uh, dia, punya, dia punya sejarah, dia punya kebudayaan, not taking that seriously. So sekarang kita punya native speakers of the Creole language lagi hari lagi kurang. So young people, luckily in that sense, we have a set, Portuguese settlement, so the young people still have a chance to speak to carry on the heritage. But many of our cultural practices connected to the sea, uh, macam Pesta San Pedro, sekarang lagi hari lagi kurang nelayan because uh, kita punya pantai pun makin hari makin kurang. So that is actually our fear that eventually the community will disintegrate because we lose the sea, which is uh, very important for our way of life. So that is one of our, of our kebimbangan uh, segi uh, uh, bahasa dan kebudayaan. Okay, and then um, we we hope that there will be uh, initiatives to preserve this community because it's a very unique community in this part of the world. Satu uh, ke community keturunan Portugis uh, di Melaka is very unique because dalam rantau only one. Uh, dekat India, dekat uh, Indonesia, dekat uh, Macau, dekat Sri Lanka, semua dah habis, dah pupus. Melaka is the only place, so it's important that we make all efforts to preserve this unique community. However, there are those who are not sitting idly by. And in a bid to preserve their culture, one of them is teaching the younger generations their mother tongue, the Papia Cristang Creole language. Um, kalau ikut statistik dua tahun uh, 1990, um, memang dia punya uh, bahasa kami 
um, declining lah Bukan kata nak lupus tapi decline Sebab ramai yang tak berbahasa Portugis masa tu Bahasa Kristang lah Dan um, uh, ayah saya dan beberapa orang apa uh, linguistik linguist datang dan mereka buat um, recording ada documentation mereka dan buat dictionary okey untuk generasi yang akan datang untuk semua okey jadi nak kata bahasa tu nak luput tu tidaklah saya tak i don't agree lah ha. Technology has allowed Sara to teach Creole language through the internet. I ada buat kelas online. I gunakan Google Meet tiap-tiap hari Ahad, Sabtu pukul 2 untuk orang dewasa atau yang fasih berbahasa Portugis tetapi sudah lupa satu dua patah perkataan, mereka memasuki kelas pukul 2. Yang baru belajar memasuki kelas pukul 3 first group that I'm teaching yang paling tua sekali 80 tahun dalam kumpulan itu okay, mereka dah boleh bertutur dan lupa so I have no problem teaching yang I have problem ialah budak-budak sebab memang susah dari segi sebutan dia dia nak faham because it's like uh, <coughs> macam belajar bahasa baru untuk mereka okay? uh, mungkin ibu dengan ayah tak cakap, nenek aja yang pandai bertutur but Parents tak tahu, so that's the I do have difficulty dan bahasa kita tak pernah ada ejaan atau tulisan. So dalam from 1990 lah kami dah mula ada ejaan dengan lepas buat uh, research and all that baru kami mula dengan ejaan dia. Hmm. Bang kutudu kuten timin tu nebaru Portugis di Malaka. That, maksudnya, selamat datang ke perkampungan Portugis Melaka. <laughs>